How strong is a mother's intuition? The movie Angel of Mine starring actress Naomi Rapace is based on a true story where a mother lost her daughter during a house fire. The entire family believed all this time the daughter passed away until one day the mother spots a little girl that she strangely connected to and couldn't explain why. She would be called a stalker, a freak, but all to find out at the end her intuition was right all along. Her dead daughter was alive all all these years. This is an incredible, crazy story that was made into a movie, and I think I was meant to do this story for Spooktober this time, because you will not believe that my friend texted me a couple days ago that she had this dream about some kids coming and talking to her in her dream, and they were telling my friend that they were in a fire, they were giving names. So my friend told me all of this, and she looked up some names of what she heard in the dream, and this article, The Sauter's Family, came out. It is literally 1.11 at my clock. I am literally getting the shivers. I've never heard about the story. She's never heard about the story, but it's about five kids who went missing during a house fire. Now, this case happened in 1940s. The authorities believing that the five kids actually perished and was cremated during the fire, they actually never found human remains or bones. So it led the family and a lot of people to believe that somebody might have kidnapped the kids and took them before setting the house on fire. Now, it's been 78 years and and nobody has ever heard from the Sodders kids that went missing. And while researching that story on my YouTube algorithm, I came across a movie called Angel of Mine. And it is a very, very similar story where there was a house fire and an examiner and the officials ruled that their child died in the fire when in the end, they never found human remains, which led to the speculation that the child might have been kidnapped and potentially still alive somewhere. So I wanna ask you guys, if you are parents, how strong is your intuition? I am not a mother yet, so I don't know like how strong the intuition is or what that feels like. By the way, the YouTube algorithm have been pretty harsh on my channel. I don't know why people are not getting notified. People are not discovering these videos. So I ask you guys, if you can just like the video, subscribe, hitting the notification bell, or leaving a comment down below simply of what you have thought about today's story, all really helps so that I can continue creating these videos and sharing it with you guys. And to make these videos possible, thank you so much to Wudoku. Wudoku is a wood block puzzle game that meets Sudoku Grid. It is so relaxing and challenging that whenever I am taking a rest, when I'm in the train, Wudoku is a game I use to test my IQ and it's harder than it looks. There's hundreds of challenging levels that are great to test your IQ and intelligence. There's also three different modes to experience and explore during gameplay. You need to arrange the wooden block to form a line which clears the tiles from the board to earn points. By the way, Wudoku is completely free to download and play in both iOS and Android devices. There's no purchasing or money spent to require to play. So literally like why not? Just have it on your phone, pull it out whenever you're taking a break. I always have to be challenging myself even if when I'm in a Zen mode, low key ADHD, I don't know. So if you wanna check Wudoku out, the link is in the description box or the QR code right here. Just by you checking the links and the sponsors, it really helps to support my channel. Thank you so much to Wudoku and have fun playing. This is Luz Cuevas, and she was 25 years old at the time in 1997, married to a man named Pedro Cuevas, and the two went on to have three kids at the time, two young boys and a newborn girl named Delamar. The family lived in the state of Philadelphia, and reportedly they were not wealthy. They lived paycheck to paycheck. Of course, the father Pedro working hard to support his entire family with three kids. Now fast forward to December 15th, 1997, it was almost Christmas, almost New Year's. There's this festive mood going on around the town, around the family. It's cold, so everybody is indoors enjoying their family time. Now on this particular day, Pedro's cousin was to come over. His cousin was named Carolyn Correa, who was around 35 years old at the time. Now she was not a blood cousin, but she was married into the family. So I believe she married his cousin. That's how they became relatives. Now they say that it was usual to have relatives come over to their house all the time, sometimes to help out. Coming from an Asian family, this is totally normal, having cousins and people come over all the time. So it was the same thing 
thing for the Cuevas family. Now, there are some reports saying that at least Luz, she was not as close to Carolyn, and Pedro wasn't like that close to Carolyn as well. Now, at the time, Carolyn also told her entire family and relatives that she was also eight months pregnant and that she recently gave birth as well. So there was something to connect between Luz and Carolyn. It seemed like they both were pregnant and gave birth not too long after each other. Now, again, on this day, December 15th, the two young boys were on the first floor playing around. They were age four and five. And their newborn daughter, only 10 days old, named Delamar, she was upstairs sleeping in her crib. Now, Luz claims that Carolyn seemed to be acting a bit odd that day, but obviously nothing too alarming. Luz wasn't really close to Carolyn, and we don't actually know what she meant by strange. But they were all hanging out, and she said her final goodbyes and left the house. Now, shortly after, she would come back to the house again, claiming that she left her wallet upstairs near the baby room, found her wallet, and abruptly left the house. Not too long after Carolyn left, at around 7 p.m., the family realized a smoke smell coming from somewhere, only to panic and realize that it was coming from upstairs. There baby room. Luz, of course, went upstairs quickly to check up on the baby, but already she claims that there was thick smoke and fire everywhere. But it was still enough for her to actually see through the smokes and saw that her baby, Delamer, wasn't inside of her crib. She also saw that the window inside of the room was open. Again, this was December. It was a cold day and she has a baby. Why would the window be open? Within seconds, the thick black smoke just covered everywhere. She couldn't find the baby and ended up having to leave the house. After everyone was outside, people heard her screaming, saying, my baby, my baby. Firefighters came almost right away, and it was reported that the fire was under control in 13 minutes. I'm not sure if they mean 13 minutes since they called 911 or 13 minutes since they arrived. Now, apparently, the couple Luz and Pedro didn't really speak English well. They spoke Spanish all their life, and there were some communication errors between them and the firefighters. Now, she was able to communicate and say that there was a baby inside. So the firefighters went in, and unfortunately, they did not find any bodies, which left them to believe that the baby must have died, and they need to now look for human remains. And this was conveyed to the family, but Luz at the time believing that still, that that image of her baby not being in the crib, the door being open. She tried to convey to them that maybe the baby was kidnapped. She was kidnapped, but she couldn't really get that message out to them. Not to mention, it's crazy to think that there was a kidnapping incident and there's a fire incident. Like, it just seems all a lot. Eventually, the firefighters did find something that they believed was human remains. And later, the test showed that this was just remains of a bedding, so it wasn't human remains. A professional medical examiner then came over to their house again and this time they gathered several hundred pounds of debris hoping that they would find something and the tests all show that it was actually building materials and finally, authorities came to a conclusion that it was most likely that the 10-day-old child, she was so small that they believed she was completely perished in the fire and it was impossible to actually look for human remains. I mean, it is a pretty big thing when you have official authorities and medical examiners conclude that most likely this is what happened. So the next important thing is what was the cause of the fire? Experts concluded after an investigation that the heater next to the homemade extension cord was most likely the cause of fire. It was winter and they wanted to keep that baby room warm. Now, I don't know what they mean by homemade extension cord. Maybe in the early 2000s, that was possible where people connected small extension cords to another extension cords and then into the heater. But regardless, the authorities also ruled that it was most likely human error that caused the fire, which also Luz and Pedro had to come to terms with and reality with. Now, despite all the examiners, the investigators, the authorities concluding all of this, Luz and Pedro still just had a little bit of glimmer of that like gut feeling that their daughter did not die in the fire. They decided to try and persuade the police 
police officers, the investigators to try and reopen the case to see if there was any other possible explanation for their daughters not being found in the fire. Now, because of their language barrier as well, they also wanted to hire some people such as lawyers, private investigators throughout the years. And unfortunately, it was just too much financial burden on them that they weren't able to properly hire someone to help them out. And Luz says that all these years, she tried to tell her story to somebody and nobody would listen to her because they all thought that she was just, you know, a crazy grieving mother still believing that her daughter was alive. And this is kind of the same thing that happened in the movie Angel of Mine. The mother who's looking for her dead daughter, she's deemed as crazy, as insane. Like you can't come to terms as somebody in your family, of course, like your daughter has passed away. Now, a little information that we will get more into, but Pedro and Luz do claim that after the fire, Carolyn stopped coming to see them. We rarely saw them, of course, her claiming that she had a newborn baby to take care of. And it seems like somewhere throughout the years, Carolyn moved to New Jersey. So she wasn't even in Philadelphia anymore. They also claim that the two, Pedro and Luz, did have some suspicions with Carolyn, but of course they were family and they didn't want to bring the authorities involved again. And what if they were wrong? They didn't have any proof to say that there was something wrong with Carolyn, that they can feel their gut instincts. What they thought would be just solved in months, actually years went by. And of course, their first house was destroyed by the fire. And throughout the years, they would move around a couple times. They also went on to have another child, their fourth child, and welcomed their baby boy. Now, unfortunately, just like in the movie, the couple would get a divorce. They would separate and would have to have custody of their kids going back and forth. This would happen in real life to Luz and Petro, where in 2000, they decided to split up. And of course, they just wanted to move on from this extreme heartbreaking story that they had with each other. Now, throughout their years as well, Luz also say that she was very interested in criminal TV, crime TV. Also, because of what happened to her, I guess low key, she really wanted to study what you would need to do in certain situations. So she would know by watching TV, hey, if you ever wanted to test something out, you need DNA evidence, you need to go to a certain person, you need to have all these steps in order for you to have an open investigation. And by watching TV, she says that she was taking in all that knowledge of investigations in case she needed to utilize that into her own life. Now, fast forward, it was now January of 2003, about six years since the fire incident. Luz was now 31 years old, and her, Pedro, and the kids were invited to go to a birthday party that was hosted by Pedro's sister. This was a kid's birthday party, so they decided to invite all their relatives' kids as well. And guess who also attended the birthday party? Pedro's cousin, Carolyn. And Carolyn would introduce her daughter as Elia Hernandez. She was also six years old, born around the similar time as Delamar. Again, Carolyn moved to New Jersey, so they weren't even able to see each other. I mean, how many times do you actually see your relative from another state? And just like in the movie where the main character, when she lays her eyes on this little girl, she could not take her eyes off. Like it was just her guts, her like every cell in her body just firing up saying that something was here. Luz claimed that Aaliyah had the same dimples as Delamar had, which is crazy because Luz only knew her daughter for 10 days, you guys. Not 10 months, 10 days. And a mother remembers a 10 day old newborn dimples, which is crazy because I'm like, I look at newborns and they all look the same to me. You know, newborns usually don't have anything really shaped yet. It just takes months for them to develop something about their body features. But for her to realize dimples from six years ago, a child that she saw for only 10 times, 10 days, is crazy. This is how strong her intuition was. She also says that Aaliyah just looks so similar to her other children. And right then and there, Luz acted fast. She was like, this is my only chance. I knew that she had to get some kind of DNA samples. So she went up to Aaliyah, I guess when Carolyn wasn't watching. She told Aaliyah, hey girl, you have a little bubble gum stuck in your hair. Let me just fix it for you. She claims that she went up to Aaliyah's hair and kind of brushed it, tried to take something off or pretend. And she was able to get actually five strands of hair where she wrapped it in a napkin and put it into her purse. Pedro also says that that day at the birthday party, quote, she came up to me and said, mommy, who is this to Carolyn? And Carolyn told her, this is your cousin, 
Pedro. Now Luz, finally having some kind of DNA sample, she went up to the authorities, to the police, and asked them for a DNA test, but they refused. Now this was back in 2003, you guys, so I believe DNA testings was not accessible to a lot of people. Now these days, DNA testings aren't that expensive. There's like 23andMe, I mean, there's other like affordable places where you can go to get DNA testings, but back then, that wasn't the case, and I guess you had to go to the authorities to order a DNA testing, otherwise it was gonna be like extremely expensive. Now being bummed, now police won't even do the testing for her, the next thing that she could think of was to go to the state representative. She was this short and desperate, you guys. So she somehow was able to contact the state representative, Angel Cruz, and pleaded her story. And Angel Cruz was moved by her story and ordered the authorities to give her a DNA testing. And finally, the DNA test was on the way. And a few weeks later, she finally got the answer she was looking for. You are the mother. It was a match. So all this time, Luz, like I'm getting shivers, you guys. This was her daughter Delamar. Aaliyah was Delamar all along. So soon after this, authorities arrested Carolyn and they had to do a second DNA test just to be sure because DNA testing is apparently 99.999% and also to submit it to court, I guess, to get the custody of the child, which proved that she was not the mother. Carolyn, now 41 years old, she was arrested for kidnapping, unlawful restraint arson, interfering with the custody of a child, concealment of the whereabouts of a child, aggravated and simple assault, burglary, and so much more. She surrendered to the police and was on a $1 million bail. It's still sad because Aaliyah, Carolyn is the only mother she's known all her life technically. And allegedly on the last day she would see Aaliyah forever, she said, goodbye, this would be the last time you would see your mother. Aaliyah was now taken into a temporary foster care home until the courts were able to officially grant who was going to take care of her from now on. Eventually, the courts did award Luz and Pedro custody because they were separated and divorced. They had to get shared custody. But ultimately, Aaliyah would live with Luz as her permanent home. Experts say that they were concerned of what was going to happen and how this was going to affect Aaliyah or Delamar's upbringing because children who bounce around houses, be separated from whom she lived with and thought her parents were could bring trauma to her. La says that when she went to now meet Delamar, Aaliyah was hiding under a table and when surprise, quote from vocal media, La says, she asked, do you know who I am? Delamar, six-year-old, responded, you are my mother. And within a month, Delamar was actually able to adjust very well. She accepted her new family, her three brothers, and despite experts' concerns, Delamar was pretty happy, and I guess she also felt in her intuitions that she was in her real home with her real parents. Now, just like in the movie, like I said, the main characters were divorced. In real life, it seemed like Luz and Pedro didn't have the best relationship after they divorced. Now, in a news report, Pedro's lawyer states, quote, his client desperately wanted to be involved in his long lost child's life, but has been blatantly refused and ignored. There are some rumors and some reports. I don't know how accurate or far-fetched this rumor is, but that Luz is kind of believed that Pedro might have been involved in it, or at least that because Carolyn was related to Pedro. And even if Pedro didn't have anything to do with it, obviously, it was his family technically that was involved in this, and she felt a bit of bitter towards the entire family relating to Pedro. And it says in a news report, quote, since the reunion, Luz has severed contact between Delamar and people the youngster knew as her grandmother and brothers. So it seems like after the reunion, Luz just did not want Delamar to ever be involved with that family again. I, I can't understand what Luz had been going through all these years. She probably felt bitterness and anger towards that family. Maybe the entire family was in on this, or they knew a little bit that Carolyn was off, but still kept it quiet, who knows. Now, how did Carolyn pull this all off? What is the story behind Carolyn? Now, Carolyn claimed when she was arrested that she was actually pregnant back then. Now this, people don't really know if this is true or not. 
She claimed that her baby was stillborn, so she felt a sadness, a grief, and decided to kidnap her relative's baby because she was in such a grief and completely believed in her world that Delamar was her child and she had to take her. And in the media report, it says, quote, some believe that this loss triggered a break in Korea's brain, causing her to believe in the delusion that Delamar was her own child. I believe Carolyn went on to have three other kids. I'm not sure if she adopted them or this was her actual blood-related kids. I can't find the source, but it does state that it was impossible for Carolyn to be pregnant because in 1990, she got her tubes tied. So she got a tubal ligation, which prevented her from being pregnant. So a lot of people say her story of having a stillborn child is most likely made up. Carolyn's past is also shady and she had a history of arson. Back in 1995, she tried to put a clinic office on fire after not getting what she wanted. It's also crazy, but Carolyn's boyfriend claims that back then when she brought home Aaliyah, she told her boyfriend back then, you're the father. I just had a kid at home and Carolyn's boyfriend feeling like something is not right. He asked her for a paternity test and later found out that this daughter was not his and they decided to separate just thinking that Carolyn just cheated on him and was lying the whole time. So later on, he claims that he didn't even know the whole story that Carolyn would actually kidnap a child. So which most likely is that Carolyn was pretending to be pregnant all this time to her family, friends, relatives, everybody. And police believe this is how Carolyn was actually pulled off the night of December 17th. She entered Luz and Pedro's house that day knowing what she was going to do. Now, police believe that she did have an accomplice who helped her because it was kind of impossible for her to pull this all on her own. It might have been that somebody went upstairs to the second floor to steal the baby, kidnap the child while Carolyn was trying to distract everybody. Now, she left the house, remember she came back to get the wallet, and that's when she put the house on fire. In the middle of December winter, the window was open, so somebody had to come in and grab the child that way. Now, the alleged accomplice was never caught, Carolyn never confessed to it, so we don't know if that's true or not. Now, during the trial, one of the experts claimed that she might have a medical condition where a woman believes she's pregnant, but she's not, called pseudocysis, or maybe that she just has a pathological lying behavior tendencies along with some other things. However, the judge said Carolyn was manipulative, not delusional, and sentenced her to 9 to 30 years in prison. Carolyn during court says, quote, I believe I saved her and she saved me, referring to Aaliyah. I believe that somebody else could have had her and treated her bad. She saved me because I lost my child. Delamar later in an interview, she said, I'm at my real home. Asking how she felt by the reporter, she plied with a giggle, happy. Now, after this bizarre story, the couple did get a lot of movie offers, which as you know, it's been made into multiple movies. Delamar is now a grown woman. It seemed like she herself got married as well. Now, this case fortunately turned out happy and was able to return to her home, but for the Sauter family back in 1940, the five children who apparently perished into the fire, but not really because their remains also were never found. We're talking about five human remains that was never found. People believe they also were kidnapped and 78 years later now, they still have never been found. Maybe if you guys are interested, I'll do a whole video on it because there's a lot of information to it. There's a lot of theories, authorities not coming forward with the correct information, people lying left to right. This case is crazy as well, but ultimately the question is did these children perish in the fire while well, they tested it out where they let a 2000 degrees fire burn for two hours but these bones the animal bones that they tested with still did not perish so they believe it is almost impossible to not find any remains and these kids most likely were kidnapped but what happened to them after we're talking about five kids here. How, how, why were they never found? Are they grown up? Do they not remember? Were they killed afterwards and why? Their bodies have never been found. Nothing has ever come out of that investigation. It still remains as an unsolved 
mystery. And that is a story that my friend told me about after her dream and this article she found about the Sauter family. So let me know if you want me to do a story on that. If this happened to you, how would you have felt? Especially again, like I said, if you're a parent and this happened to you, would you have a strong intuition like Luz and Pedro did? And if you did see someone that looked exactly like your daughter at a birthday party, but would you have tried to get DNA samples? I mean, people would have probably thought you were crazy. So let us know what you would have done. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to go and check Wudoku out and see you in my next video.